Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the melonic ester synthesis. This is a com companion video to the acetoacetic ester synthesis. So I'm going to go through this video a little bit quicker. I recommend that you watch the acetoacetic ester synthesis video first because the processes are very, very similar. What we're going to do here is I just want to go over the reaction. You, know, you notice here we're starting with the diethylmalonate. This is three continuous carbons with two ester groups. And I'm just going to number our carbons here. Remember that we start with an ester, so we're not going to number there. That's not a carbon, so we're going to start numbering one, two, and then I'll put the next one in three. If you look at our product, we start with three continuous carbons, but we actually only end up with two. So let's draw in those numbers. Carbon one and two. The new bond we form is from this R group here that's added, and that's here. So our new bond is from the carbon two to the R group. And the other thing that happens is the ester in red is lost from a decarboxylation reaction, which happens in step three. So overall in this reaction, we start with three continuous carbons, one, two, three. We add an R group to carbon two, so a new bond from carbon two to R group. And the two to three bond is cleaved, and this ester, after being hydrolyzed to a carboxylic acid, is lost from a decarboxylation reaction. So in here, in this example, this is only a three-step process. The number of steps can vary from three to really six because you can add on more than one R group. So here we have step one and two. We've added on only one R group, but we could also add, repeat these, and add on two different R groups here. Step three, H plus, H3O plus in heat hydrolyzes this. There is another option, so to do our hydrolysis, it can be one step using H3O+, or you can have a two-step process, where instead of acid-catalyzed hydrolysis, you use base-catalyzed hydrolysis, and we call that saponification. So sometimes you may see this written as NaOH, H+, and heat and there they're using saponification to um, hydrolyze the ester to a carboxylic acid. Um, again, we need to remember that the base much must match the ester. Okay, NaOET has to match OET minus, so we don't get a transesterification in the substitution reaction. If you ever have the methyl ester, this would be NaOME add an R group, and then H3O plus, or step three, NaOH, H plus, and heat. And again, I'll go into a little more detail in the acetoacetic ester synthesis, but this is very, very similar. One thing you'll notice here is the final product that we get out is, in fact, a carboxylic acid. So when we hydrolyze the ester on the right, we hydrolyze the ester on the left, and that is left now as a carboxylic acid. And that's really the key difference in the melonic ester synthesis as compared to the acetoacetic ester synthesis. Okay, so let's take a look at a um, specific, specific example, and I will come back to that decarboxylation reaction as we go through our specific example here just to remind you of that mechanism. So in here, we start with our diethylmalonate. We treat this with sodium ethoxide. So that is a base, and the base matches the ester. So it's going to deprotonate the most acidic protons. The most acidic protons are the protons that are alpha to both of the carbonyls. Okay, right in between, and really in this example, that is our only choice. So let's draw in our base here. So I'm drawing in sodium ethoxide, 
and our first step is a deprotonation. So the D stands for a deprotonation. Let's draw the product that we form. So instead of having two hydrogens on this alpha carbon in the middle, we only have one. And we now have a lone pair and a negative charge. Remember that this intermediate that we just formed is called an enolate. And enolates are formed when we deprotonate an alpha hydrogen. And we can draw two resonance structures. I'm just going to draw one resonance structure because they're exactly symmetric. So the lone pair can come down, form a carbon-carbon double bond, break the carbon-oxygen pi bond to make a single bond, and that will get us this intermediate here, ETO, single bond to O, double bond, and then the rest of the molecule is the same. And again, there is another resonance structure from this where we do the same thing on the other side. So instead of the lone pairs going to the left, they go to the right, and it's basically the exact same species but flipped. Um, the, o, the O minus is on the right side. So we don't need to really draw both of them because they're symmetric and look the same, but there are, in fact, three resonance structures. And that's why that hydrogen here is so acidic. It's easy to deprotonate it because we form a very stable um, structure that has three resonance structures associated with it. So after we formed our enolate, remember our enolate is a very good nucleophile. So what happens is we look at step two. We add in our electrophile, and our enolates will attack. So that lone pair will come and attack the carbon connected to the bromine and kick that out. So we can now draw our enolate. We still have one alpha hydrogen remaining. And now we have a new bond if you count our carbons, one, two, three. So we now have three new carbons attached, one, two, three. So this is the intermediate we get after step two. Now, if we look at steps three and four, NaOET and MeI, we do exactly what we did before. NaOET will deprotonate this to form an, a minus here, which is again another enolate. Instead of having an H, it now has this propyl group coming off it. That is a good nucleophile, which does an SN2 attack on methyl iodide. So let's draw the product we get from that. So again, I'm not really drawing the mechanisms, but this is a deprotonation step to form the enolate, followed by an attack. To get this product, so I just copied and pasted there, Let it, let's erase and show the new bond that we have. So looking up here, we just have a methyl to our halogen, so we just have one methyl group attached. I'll draw that in green, and there's our methyl. So this is the product we have now after step number four. Okay. 
Now we look at step five, and one thing I should mention, sometimes in, when you add the second equivalent of sodium ethoxide, we can use another, another base um, for that. So let's just draw in that other base that we can draw. So it's either sodium ethoxide or a lot of times people will use potassium T-butoxide, that's K plus. O minus to a tert butyl group. So that is a, another base you could use for the second step, kind of a stronger base. Now we need to think about what happens next. Well, now we're looking at step 5, H3O plus in heat. And again, I said we can either do that with H3O plus or sodium hydroxide followed by H3O plus. And this is our hydrolysis reaction. So what we can do here is draw in our product. Let's just fix this up a little bit. There's our methyl group there. And in the hydrolysis reaction, we, our esters are gone, and we now have our carboxylic acids. So we have OH and OH. And then the last thing that happens, and this is still happening, acid catalyzed with heat, so this is still step five, is remember we're going to do our decarboxylation reaction. So we're going to lose CO2. And the carbon, it doesn't really matter which one we lose, I just tend to choose the one on the right, that is going to be lost as carbon dioxide to get our final product. So if we number our carbons again, there's carbon 1, there's carbon 2, and let's do that on our final product. There's carbon 1, there's carbon 2. So we still have the two carbons, carbon 1 and 2. A propyl group coming off in blue, three carbons, one, two, three carbons, and a methyl group coming off. Again, all of those groups are connected to carbon two. And I just realized I didn't number the starting material, so let's just do that. One and two, just so it's clear. And that is how we get our reaction. This is our final product. Okay, so what I want to do is just review this decarboxylation reaction. Okay, so if you notice here, and I made a mistake, let's just add this. This is not a methyl, that is an OH. So after the compound has been hydrolyzed, we have this dicarboxylic acid. I just want to review this process and the mechanism. I'm going to redraw our compound. So I'm going to draw our carboxylic acid, double bond O, and I'll draw the product that we looked before. We have a propyl group, three carbons, we had a methyl group, and I'm going to draw that carboxylic acid. And notice how I draw it, I just rotate a bond so it's easier to draw the mechanism. This decarboxylation reaction happens when you heat a beta carbonyl, beta dicarbonyl compound. So you have two carbonyls or a beta carboxylic acid with a carbonyl that's two carbons away. The arrows are very similar to a Diels Alder reaction. That double bond forms a new bond between the OH. I break the OH bond to form a C double bond. And here's the key bond. I break that carbon carbon single bond here to form a carbon-carbon double bond there. So this is what happens when you heat this type of compound. And that's really what the heat does. And now I'm going to draw our product. We have a carboxylic acid. But now instead of a double bond to an O, we have a single bond to an OH. My double bond is here. I still have my methyl. I still have my propyl. One, two, three. And the other thing that we formed is our C double bond O 
double bond O, and that's carbon dioxide. And that carbon dioxide bubbles off as a gas, so we lose it. The last thing we have to remember is that this is in fact just an enol. Okay, so we have a carbon-carbon double bond, single bond to an OH. Enols can easily tautomerize to the keto form. So let's draw in the actual product we get here. A methyl carbon, do that in blue, one, two, three. And what we get out here is the keto form. So remember this process going from an enol to a keto is called tautomerization. tautomerization, and there we go from our enol form to our keto form. So this is the mechanism by which we have decarboxylation and we lose this carbon here in red. And that's lost as carbon dioxide. Okay, so we've gone through this a couple times. What I would like you to do for your homework is use the melonic ester synthesis to synthesize the compound shown. Again, I'll just remind you our starting material, and it doesn't really matter which ester you use. You can use the ethyl ester or the methyl ester. So I'll draw out the starting material for you. So you need to figure out a way to synthesize this compound. Just to give you a hint, I'm going to label my carbons. Carbon 1, carbon 2, and I'll put this carbon in carbon 3 because that's the carbon that's lost. And we'll label those here for you. There's carbon 1, there's carbon 2. So clearly what you can see is the groups that I need to add, and it doesn't matter the order here is that group and that group. So please complete the synthesis of this and turn it in for homework.